I'm, I know I'm always look so serious when I'm trying to figure this out because I, I, every time I hover over the stop broadcast button, I'm like literally just about to end this broadcast. I don't know why. It's like it's red, it's shiny. I can't, I can't resist. I, I've done it before. It's, Have you I done it? it? Yeah. Yes. It's yes. weird. It's like of all the buttons to press, do not press the one that stops your show, and yet that's the one that I really want. It, really it's want to press. it's red and inviting. I know. I know. Well, how are you feeling, Pamela? I I am surviving. This is apparently the year where I I said I wanted more things I do to go viral, and I wasn't really intending it for it to be body parts with viruses. Oh, all right. so you are you are the typhoid, Pamela. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I continue to combat the viral sludge that <laughs> chases me. Um, so, but you also, we didn't record last week because you were actually on an airplane returning from Pensacon, which was super fun, I hope. It, it really was, and, and we would have recorded that morning, except I started to get sick while at Pensacon, so I was patient zero at Pensacon, mm. and... It's yeah, a gift that so. keeps on giving. It it is it is. I give science and germs. Visit me often. <laughs> um, and then, uh, but we're gonna try and record probably tomorrow. We'll make up the missing episode, and then we should be back on back yes. on track until other things happen. I've I've got some travel coming up, although it probably won't impact us for the next couple of weeks. Um, so uh, for anyone who has never done this before, uh, and specifically, I'm talking to you, C.S. Breyer, who says that you've never done this before, um, we're going to be recording a live episode of Astronomy Cast uh, right here on Google+. So we'll take about 30 minutes, and we will record the show that the regular, uh, non-enhanced audio listeners who have been getting the show will get. And then we'll stick around for a few minutes. I'm not sure how Pamela's energy level is doing. Um, oh, no! What? What? Ah, you did it again! I did it again, but I caught myself. There. We're updated with my year in space calendar. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll stick around for a few minutes after, and we'll answer your questions about space and astronomy, or about the month of March on the year in space calendar. I have nothing to offer about the month of March. No? no. Um, it, it includes an equinox. That, that's the best I can do. Uh, on 17, 1781, on March 13th, William Herschel discovered Uranus. There you go. I'm pleased. Um, actually, for me, uh, March 23rd will be the 15-year anniversary of Universe Today. Dang. Isn't that you're, crazy? You're an old man on the I internet. I know. I know, totally. And you have fabulous lighting for a change. <laughs> I've... I've yeah, well, I've, I've, got, I've got a bunch of lighting going on here. Um, okay, so, yeah, so we'll do the show. And uh, we'll get rolling. Are you... Uh, oh, you know what I should have done? Something no. important. I should have had my intro done, but I will fake it. Oops. Uh, welcome to the making of the sausage, people. <laughs> yeah. Let me just grab this, or else Preston's just going to uh, kill me. Um, what else is happening? So, what's in the news? Crazy thing about Ukraine... Yeah, it's um, getting invaded by Russia, or at least Crimea is. Yeah. Um, did you uh, did you see that uh, Gravity won a bunch of Oscars last night? Yes, yes, it did. Deservedly so. And and Jennifer Lawrence once again fell down wearing high heels in a fancy dress. <laughs> Oops. That was the lead story this morning. Instead of Russia invading Crimea on the first news site I went to. Really. Yes. J Law falling. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready to record? Mm-hmm. Okay. As am I. So it begins. Okay. okay. I'm going to press record. I have pressed record. It is recording. It is in mono. Testing, testing. Okay. Um, let me bring this over here. Hello, Preston. As always, we thank you for your dedicated service to Astronomy Cast. We couldn't Even do if this it does sound buddy. like he's mocking you, we know. <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm so not mocking you, Preston. <laughs> we love you so much. Uh, okay, here we go. Astronomy Cast, episode 336, Units of Measure. Welcome to Astronomy Cast, our weekly facts based journey through the cosmos, where we help you understand not only what we know, but how we know what we know. My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and with me, is Dr. Pamela Gay, a professor at Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville, 
and the director of CosmoQuest. Hey, Pamela, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Fraser? Good. Uh, now you have been you've been traveling. Uh, you've got more traveling coming in the future. Um, unclear at this point. I was at Pensacon last week. I contracted the creepy crawly flu. I'm going to go to the doctor before I decide about getting on an airplane again. Right. Because I, I value my eardrums. Right. Uh, now let's give a quick shout out to the upcoming CosmoQuest Hangoutathon. Yes. On April 26, 27, we are going to do 36 straight hours of astronomy goodness. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different things planned. We're still working on getting the confirmations in from everybody, so bear with us before we start announcing the schedule. But we wanted to let you know this is coming, and you can watch us all slowly lose our minds in the name of science on April 26, 27. It is always hilarious. Um, good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I know you're going to sequester me for a couple of hours. I'll be uh, happy to help out. So Likely more than a couple of hours. Yikes. Um, all right. Go for a few hours. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Well, let's get rolling with, this, with the show. Okay. So uh, how heavy is a kilogram? How long is a second? How warm is a degree? We measure our universe in so many different ways using different units of measurement. But how do scientists come up with the measurement tools which are purely objective? Uh, all right, Pamela. So now I, I'm a Canadian, and so I think in metric. I fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, am also able to think in imperial most of the time. But there's one thing that I just can't think in, in the imperial, which is temperature. Really? So, yeah, I, it is. I am incapable, and I really, I try. And so someone goes, "Oh, it's like seventy degrees out." And I just like, "What? What is this gibberish?" I don't know what Low that 20s. means. Low twenties. I don't know what it means. I'm not even going to listen to you now because I, I don't want to find out. Um, and so you know, if, if you say that it's minus forty, well, then I got some common ground. But uh, but most of the case, I, I really, I actually have no idea. I don't know if it's warm, if it's cold. If a person says hundred degrees, I don't know. Is that boiling water? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So, so I have to admit, temperature is one of those things that my brain gets broken with because I deal so much with people like you who think in self Celsius and so much with, well, my weather comes in imperial, sadly. And um, for whatever reason, my brain automatically switches to Celsius when it hits 32 degrees Fahrenheit and zero Celsius. So suddenly it's like if it's below freezing, it needs to be a negative number as far as my brain is concerned. And so I have this weird, I have to be careful what comes out of my mouth because the units may be randomized. And units of measurement are a bugbear. I mean, if you've been, you know, going through high school, going through university, dragging units of measure along is awful. And that's how you lose your marks because you forgot to remember that it's meters per second squared, or it's, I don't know, kilonewtons per arc second. And, um, and this is a really important thing, because saying, I'm going to get 12, what does that mean? I'm going to get 12 pies, 12 apples, $12, $12,000. 12, $12, 12 Academy Awards, yeah. So, so the rule when I'm teaching is if you don't put units in, I automatically make it units of cow to amuse myself and write the word cow in and take off points. So 12 cow, 13.6 cow. It's always in units of cow. That's what my default unit is, cow. Right. Um, so what are the, I guess, you know, could we boil the entire universe down into some basic measurements? If you start with a unit of distance and a unit of mass and a unit of time you can pretty much get everywhere else from there wow okay so what is the basic measurement for distance the basic measurement for distance is the meter right. uh, this this is an oddly defined unit because it was initially defined based on the distance between the earth's equator and the north pole but that, that's not entirely a constant number with plate tectonics and all that. So it was originally one ten millionth the distance from the Earth's equator to the North Pole, assuming sea level the entire time, and then it was realized that was silly, or at least not constant and really hard to work with. So it became the length of 
a path traveled by light in a vacuum during a time interval of 1 over 299,792,458 of a second. And yes, I had to read that because I would get it wrong otherwise. Right. Okay. So that sounds. I I sense some retconning here, where <laughs> where where there because that doesn't sound like a very precise number of seconds for light to be traveling, or you know, fractions of a second. So, you know, why wouldn't it be like the amount light travels in? I don't know, one one hundred thousandth of a second, or one ten millionth of a second. It's well, it's such a weird number, right? It, it was a matter of they started out with what they wanted to have as a basic unit, the the one ten millionth of the distance from the Earth's equator to the North Pole. That seemed nice. But when it was realized that that was problematic, they figured out, okay, so what can we do that's a round number and pretty close and doesn't change things up too much? And in the process of trying to come up with a repeatable definition that could be repeated in multiple laboratories, they ended up with this crazy fraction of a second. Now, what's great about this is that it's based on a law of physics. It's based on, on something that, you know, you could send a, well, okay, you could, I'm trying to think, if you send a message to the aliens, you said, we measure in meters, here's how we measure meter, you'd have to tell them how we measure second. And you could also <laughs> tell them second, because you could say, which we'll get to in, in shortly, that is also a basic measurement of, of the universe. And they could then have the exact same yardstick that we do, which is different if we say that we measure in the foot, and the foot is about the size of a grown adult's foot, right? They would, they would have a problem with that, or a yard, or a mile, or whatever. But if you say you know, light speed, however far light goes in this fraction of a second, then then that never goes away. That you never you will never lose your original uh, yardstick. Because and, it's and it's light speed. And you can always go back and just remeasure light. And and the convenient thing is that time, seconds, is also defined somewhat naturally. Um, in this case it's it's a bit more complex it's defined as the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation co corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. Perfect. All right, let's just move on. That's, that one's pretty straightforward. I think we all understand that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so... A lot of people misthink that that time is defined using how long it takes for a half-life to decay to occur or something else because they hear the word radiation. That has nothing to do with this. Light has wavelengths. The wavelengths vary depending on the color of light. Different atomic transitions have distinct colors that correspond to that transition. So the energy needed for a hydrogen atom to go from 2 to 3 we see as um, bomber red. Um, in this case, in the cesium atom, in the ground state, there's a hyperfine transition which gets into all sorts of crazy quantum mechanics. But it's an energy transition. That's the key point. In 133, at a given temperature, in this case zero Kelvin, um, the the radiation emitted, the color of light emitted, the amount of time it takes for nine billion yada 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 periods to go by, that is defined as one second. Right. So it is the. It is, it is like the, the cesium atom is, isn't it? It's like it's oscillations, right? Well, it's, it's the wavelength of the light emitted by this transition. So cesium undergoes a hyperfine transition, emits a photon, photon goes flying away. That photon has a given frequency. It has a given wavelength. So if you wait for 9 billion yada 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 wavelengths to go past, the amount of time that it takes those wavelengths to go past, that is, is defined as the second. So now we've got our meters and we've got our seconds. And these are, as I mentioned, we could, we could email, we could broadcast to the aliens, and we could say, you know, cesium, okay, well, cesium atom, you know that atom that's 
on the periodic table of elements. Okay, you don't have a periodic table of elements, but you know the one with that many protons. Okay, that one. Uh, and then you know light, the speed light takes for that much time. Okay, great. And then we could translate, and they could have the same yardstick, and they could be measuring the universe just like us. Yes. They could be they could be figuring out meters per second, meters per second square. They could be calculating parsecs. They could be doing all this kind of thing. Parsecs, no. Go in the arc second. Because that's defined off the planet Earth. Earth. Okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> light years. Um... <laughs> But you're right, yeah, a parsec we need to know. But we could tell them the size of the planet Earth, and we could tell them the based in meters. I mean, as you mentioned, like all this comes back down to, to meters and seconds. Yeah. So that's so those are two of those basic uh, measurements. Then what was the third? Kilograms. Well, you have to have a unit of mass. Yeah, you need to have a unit of mass. And, and so pick a gram, pick a kilogram, doesn't really matter which one you pick. Here's where things get foobarred, for lack of a better term. Um, the kilogram is actually based off of a thing. Mm -hmm. So can't so much transmit that one to the aliens until we get intergalactic transporter technology. So the kilogram is, uh, is a thing somewhere, right? It is. There are multiple kilograms uh, locked away in meteor meter locked away in meteorological laboratories, kept under very precise conditions. Um, interestingly, if the proton does decay, these will gradually decay over time. Yeah. Um, luckily, we haven't noticed the proton decaying, but there's other chemical things that is the reason they have to be so precisely maintained. Um, yeah, it's kind of problematic. Right, so there are these... I guess there is like a, a chunk of metal, I don't know what it's made out of, um, that is in like the International Weights and Measures place and it's kept yeah. in this it's kept in this really um, pristine environment. Nobody ever touches it. All they do is occasionally make copies of it and, and weigh it. And and, and the really it. annoying thing is this isn't what it was intended to be. Initially it, it was planned that one cubic centimeter of water would weigh one gram and that's easy um, but the problem is that when they actually compared their standard of measure kilogram to weight of water they got 1.000025 a liter of water weighed that instead of one kilogram which was what was anticipated but couldn't we go back and just say, no, no, from here on out, a, You'd liter, think. Of, a liter of water weighs you a kilogram? You would think that. But, but I suspect the reason, and this is pure guesswork, um, if you think about it, so much of our monetary system is based on who has how much of this or that precious metal. And so if you go and you redefine the kilogram, which has been this wrong compared to liters of water amount for hundreds of years, what do you do with the amount of gold in Fort Knox? Hmm. Uh, yeah. You just say it's a different number and everyone agrees and everyone just gets along and we all just, you know, get together <laughs> with a new international standard. But I agree but, with you. I agree with you. It seems like in, in that many decimal places we could just say, deal, define yeah. it off of water. But I've heard that there are ideas that you could go back and try to, to define the weight or the you know mass from again from the universe, right? There are various ideas like um, you know detecting how strongly weight is pulled by the by gravity, um, uh, you know just count the number of atoms. So in so your so you're item. mixing nomenclature in the most charming of ways. Mm -hmm. Mass and weight are not the same thing. Right, I understand. I understand, but if you know the mass, if you know the gravity of the place, then that could help you get back. And you know how hard it's being pulled. That could, you could calculate the mass, right? Right. So, so mass is something that definitely should have a natural way to define it. And and this is where it was nice and convenient to say, based on water at a given temperature filling a given volume, that the volume is based off of naturally defined numbers. That was a good way to do this. Yeah, there's going to be approximately the right number of, of molecules of water in that liter. Exactly. Right. 
And again, we could tell the aliens. We could call the aliens and say, count up 42 quadrillion water atoms, and you've got a liter. Or you've got a liter, and that makes a kilogram. And, and it could have been even done more simplistically by using something that took on a crystalline form so you didn't have to worry about pressure. As long as it's a solid, nominally it should be the same volume. It's right. just not how they did it. Um, okay, so we've got our units of time, we've got our units of distance, we've got our unit of mass. What, so how, do, how can we then derive things? I mean, I think about things like temperature. Well, temperature, okay, I forgot. There's one more because oh. I like to forget temperature. Okay, Temperature right. we can't get from those, you're right. Um, temperature is, is another one that, in this case, uh, Celsius, the units that we use, were defined off of the freezing point and boiling point of water at sea level under standard pressure. So there we have nice mathematically derived, divide it by 100 and you get the size of a degree, 0 to 100 based on a phase transition at a given pressure at a given. As a, as a Canadian I might note it's not, oh it's, it's not seawater, it's regular water. Yes. Yeah, at sea level though, right. Um, right. So, right, and so again we could transmit that, we could say take water, boil it, that's 100 degrees Celsius, take water, freeze it, that's 0 degrees Celsius, feel free to break that up into 100 units, in between we can talk the same language. And, and here the, the catch starts to be that the, the temperature that water boils and freezes is also dependent on the pressure that it's being exp it, it's being held under. But pressure is something that we can get from force over area. Force has to do with mass and acceleration. So all of that can go back to our original numbers. But this is where we start to get to everything's de derived from everything else, and it starts to get a little bit messy. Woo. How? Well, so force. This is the one that leaves most people who think in the imperial system completely foobart. We like to be confusing in imperial units here in the United States and the like five other planets, five, under, five other places on the planet that use imperial units. Um, and we say things like, I have a mass of 100 pounds, which makes absolutely no sense because my weight is 100 pounds. And that means that I have a mass that's in slugs. And personally, I don't want to think of my mass in terms of slugs. And so no one really uses the banana unit slugs. Of slug. no. slugs. Which kind of slugs are we talking about here? Banana slugs. Banana slugs. Okay. Banana slugs. Uh, well, but, I, but we have the same thing here, which is that my scale, I measure my weight in kilograms. And so if I try to explain to someone they're going to go to Mars, they're going to stand on the surface of Mars their weight on their scale here might say, you know, a kid, so say 50 kilograms, and then they go to Mars, and their weight is going to say whatever, 15 kilograms or whatever yeah, the percentage so, is. Yeah, so the thing is your weight isn't measured in kilograms. Your weight is measured in newtons. So you have My to scale take... says otherwise. Your scale has the wrong terminology. I know. Your scale is giving you your mass because it's taking into consideration the gravitational acceleration at sea level where your scale assumes that you are located. Right. There's no Newton's button on my scale. So, so this, this is where we really screw ourselves up with nomenclature. Mass which should be measured in kilograms or slugs, depending on which units you like. Let's go with kilograms because no one wants to know their equivalent number of slugs. Your mass has to do with how easy it is to move you around. So if I were to plop you down in a wheeled chair that has completely frictionless wheels in a room where air resistance is not something I need to consider, I have to exert a certain amount of force to move you around. I take you into outer space, have to exert force to move you around. That force is, is what it takes to get you accelerated from zero to in motion. That has everything to do with your mass. Now, gravity on the planet Earth 
is trying to accelerate you through the floor. Luckily, the floor has a normal force that is pushing back up. So gravitational force down and normal force of floor, chair, whatever you're on, balances out so you're not actually accelerating downward. But your scale, because it has a spring in it, it can measure how much Earth is pulling on you. And so it's actually measuring your mass, taking into account gravity by measuring the force of the planet Earth on your body, solving for mass. My scale here in pounds ignores the whole gravitational acceleration part and just says this is the force that you're experiencing. So mass is how much of you there is for me to try and exert a force on to get you moving. Weight is the total force that's needed. Right, and if I recall what force is mass times acceleration, so we derive mass, acceleration is, is distance... 9.8 meters per second squared for the force of gravity. Right, and so that gives us meters, seconds, so boom, we're, we're deriving force. What else, what, else, what else of the basic measurements of the universe are we able to, to derive? I get density? Well, uh, so density, that is the amount of mass in a volume. So and volume is here by distance, you have, yeah. yeah, so here you have kilograms per meter cubed. Pick your units. We have energy to deal with. Energy, when we look at energy, um, we're looking at you're taking a mass and um, it's, it has a, a force over a distance. So take your object, move it some distance, it had a mass that had to get moved that distance using a certain force. The units are kilograms meter squared per second squared. That's energy. It's measured yeah. in joules, named right. after the dude. So you literally could derive, you could take all the equations that you work in mm -hmm. and bring them all the way back to those four basic measurements. And, and this is part of why physics teachers yell at students or at least get very terse and do things like write cow a lot, which is what I do, when students don't use units. I don't know how many times I've forgotten equations and like BSed my way through to the right answer when I was a student because I knew what units I needed to get. And so it's like, throw in the speed of light. That will get me where I need to go. That, that works when you're in some classes. Um, and, and it's because of the units that you can often figure out what you forgot in your equation because everything goes back to kilograms, meters, seconds, and then when you start getting into gas laws, you throw in temperature. Wow. And what about like some of the really extreme stuff? I mean, when you think about all of these crazy, you know, calculations about black hole event horizons and decay of radiation and, you know, I mean... It's, it's, it all comes down to the units. And what's kind of awesome is in relativity, um, there's special units that you can work in depending on what you're doing that put everything in terms of the speed of light. And you define the speed of light as one, and, and your math becomes easy. Now, what do you think about the actual counting system? I know this is, you know, you're not a mathematician, uh, but the fact that, that everything even just comes back to 10, you know, that because... It matches the number of digits that we have on our hand. You know, would, that we have trouble explaining that to the aliens that we run in base ten, and that that one's actually a bit problematic because the universe likes to work in natural logs, and that is is a completely different set of numbers. Um, if you've ever seen, instead of using log for log, using ln, and instead of raising something to the power of ten, you use e that's your you're working in in natural logs when you do that um, it's it's also a lot of times when you're dealing with computational stuff it all falls out to base 2 base 8 base 16 there's a lot of different ways to do numbers base 10 is just one of them and I think if we want to actually consider communications with other life forms um, we need to be more fluid in how we think about numbers the way we need to learn to be fluid about how we think about temperatures if we travel a lot.
It's interesting and probably just a coincidence that, you know, we live in a three spatial dimension, one time dimension universe. And then we think about the measurements. We have three measurements plus time. But, you know, that's just me making completely irrational uh, coincidences. So, um, cool. I think, we, I think we sort of ran through that. That was great, Pamela. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Let us save. <coughs> Such a weird episode. Hey, you're the one that added it to the list. I, I, I just thought it would be fast, fun. I was super fascinated by the topic. Yeah, yeah, no, it was great. I didn't know that the kilogram was, wasn't derived. Annoying? Yeah. <laughs> and then I need to export... So everyone, we will uh, just, we're just saving, making sure everything's safe, and then we will get to your questions. And my husband just pointed out that on all the graphics I just posted for the Hangout-a-thon, I managed to misspell Hangout-a-thon. So grab your defunct copies of the graphics now before they change. <laughs> Good start. All right. Okay. I'm uh, safely uploading. Uh, let's look at some questions. So if you didn't know, you can interact with us uh, watching. There's the Q&A app. So if you're watching this video somewhere, it'll say we're interacting through the questions and answers app. So you can do it there. I'll also check out uh, over on the event page. And if you've used, uh, I don't know, Twitter, use the hashtag AstronomyCast I, or just tweet at Pamela yeah. or me. Tweet at me. That works. All right. Uh, so Adam Synergy asks, what's the most ridiculous unit of measurement? S the um, snoot? Yeah, that was kind of fun. Uh, there's a, a bridge in Boston that uh, the length of the bridge is married, married, is measured in snoots, which is the height of a student from I don't know how many decades ago. And they re paint the bridge every few years. But as I understood, they actually like took the person and flipped them over and over and over again to, to measure yes. the distance. Yes. And, and what's kind of amusing is it's the bridge that connects Mass Ave at MIT to Boston. So from Cambridge to Boston. And at the end of the bridge, that's MIT. But they named it the Harvard Bridge because the bridge was considered engineering engineering wise so gross that MIT didn't want to take responsibility for it. So it's the Harvard <laughs> Bridge That's connecting funny. MIT to Boston. What else? What else is a ridiculous unit of measurement? What do you think about um, uh, the plank? I don't know. That one, it, that, that's not ridiculous. That one's at least based in math. Um, Fortnite is one of those ones that <laughs> Yeah. It's sort of like, I know why you'd want them, but, but really? We needed just to have weeks. just a unit? Yeah. What about stone? I've never really figured out why that is any more or less reasonable than the pound, other than it makes the number of your, your weight very small. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, but I think I like, like I will admit... Um, as a Canadian, that when you, you know the, you have a degree measurement system that that ha that's more precise. That that when so, there is a difference between sixty five and seventy, or between seventy and seventy five. But yeah. for us, you're only ending up with a couple of degrees difference. And so, you know, what is feels really cold and feels really warm is literally ten degrees. You know, like if it's fifteen degrees, it's like, oh, this is nice. I'm not going to put my shorts on yet, but this feels good. At 25, you're not happy anymore. It's getting, it's starting to get hot, like too hot. So literally, yeah, and then in, in Arizona, it gets into the 40s. So yeah, no, no, that's not even. I didn't want to talk about that. Uh, but <laughs> but that's just you know that's such a, a funny thing. And so for you guys, you can have all these like, oh, the temperature is going to be in the mid 70s today. It's going to be really nice. And for us, it's just like, you know, it's either if it's 18, that's good. If it's 19, that's bad. So, um, not exactly, but you know, but you know what I'm saying. I we don't have a mean. lot of we don't have a lot of distance in our in our scale. See, for what I feels actually find that pleasing because when I'm traveling, it's it's like 73 to 77 is pretty much the same outfit. 
and I know 23 to 25, that starts to have a meaningful change. So the meaningful change that requires a change of wardrobe is, is you get there faster with Celsius. Yeah. Uh, so Chris Bamford asks, when is the U.S. going to catch up with the real world with measurements? And you know what's funny? Like, I am absolutely obnoxious about using metric in my videos. Uh -huh. So I just, like, I don't even say the imperial ones. I don't say the number of miles. I don't say the degrees Fahrenheit. I just, like, because I'm, you know, I'm Canadian. We're raising it. That's the temperature we know. Deal. De yeah. I mean, if an American was using the temperature and the, the methods they knew, then they would do that. And I get people yelling at me every time. Or like, you know, if you're planning to, you know, in America, we use these measurement systems, and so you should use those. I'm yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not American. You're I'm Canadian. Canadian. I don't understand this exotic mile. So Although I, I do have to mock my Canadian husband because he's lived in America long enough that he stopped using Imperial. <gasps> I mean, he stopped. Oh, he using... started using it. He started. Yeah. yeah. Really? I'm so, buy so I six can't speak. Of apples. Yeah, I can't speak Celsius at him. Yeah, we well, you know we're not we're not there yet either. I mean, if I buy my apples by the pound, that's you know. So when you're in the store, it's all things are in by the pound. So it's not we're not there yet. But yet, but but it's weird because right next to it, you'll buy fish by the hundred grams, and then you'll buy candy by the hundred grams. So yeah, that's no, it's random. It's very random, yeah. And then you'll buy a ten pound bag of potatoes. No, I know we're 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 still not we're not all the way through it. But do you think that it'll ever happen in the states, or do you think there's like a few half-hearted attempts to switch to? So, metric so there? the crazy thing is, when I was little. Um, they they were like trying to prepare everyone for the great switch that was going to occur and they had a year that it was going to occur and everyone was going to convert and the problem is that instead of teaching people to think in metric they tried teaching people to do conversions so you were still thinking in imperial and just doing unit conversions left and right and that that doesn't do anything useful except teach you how to do unit conversions. Um, and I think that if they ever want to actually make the change, they need to change their method for getting to it. And I don't know, I don't know if an old dog can learn new tricks. Um, so I've got a few more ridiculous measurements. So there's the beard second. The what? The beard second used for very short distances, like in integrated circuits, and it's the average length that a beard grows in one second. So, <gasps> okay, that is truly how I examine the world. Uh, as you mentioned, the smoot. Um, what else? Uh, for area, uh, nuclear scientists use something called the barn. Yeah. The shed. Uh, and then a bar in megasecond. So it's for measuring uh, amount of uh, oh for collisions between particles. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, a do power donkey power. So it's 250 watts, about a third of a horsepower. Um, uh, Kardashian is a unit what? of measure. Yeah, representing 72 days of marriage. So you can measure your marriage in Kardashians. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> I, uh, I'm ashamed of the society that we live in. A shake, so uh, 10 nanoseconds, time for a generation within a nuclear chain reaction. Uh, oh, Helens, of course, right? You can measure, you can measure the beauty in millihelens, right? Which, of course, is the Helen beauty that... Helen Troy. Yeah, she was beautiful enough to launch a thousand ships, so you can measure beauty in millihelens. Um... What else have we got? Uh, what was it in uh, Will Wheaton? You can measure it in Wheatons. So how many Twitter followers Will Wheaton has? So uh, there we go, some ridiculous measurements. Um, what else? Uh, Josh Andrew notes that Britain is in limbo with units, just like us. So sometimes it's liters, sometimes it's gallons, sometimes it's temp... It's, yeah. Yeah. They're, that they're, I've experienced. But they will mock you solidly for using anything other than Imperial until you ask them how much they weigh, in which case they just become confused. Um, Simon Love notes that Jennifer Lawrence is not the kind of star we'd be expect to be talking about in Astronomy Cast. True. Unless she's a big space fan. She can come on the show anytime. Um, what else we got? Wow. 
think you're getting banned. Okay. I do not want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> it's fun. I hope that person had fun. Um, what is Plank time, by the way? Or Plank? Oh, there you go. There's the Sagan. It measures billions and billions of things. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so, so, you know, the universe is 13.8 Sagans. Sagans old. We we actually did an entire unit on Planck stuff. Yeah, we, we did an, we episode did an entire Planck. episode on Planck stuff early on. Um, it it boils down to uh, trying to come up with natural units to define everything, and it was. I'm hoping I'm not going to get this wrong, but it it's like after one Planck time is when all of the forces began to separate out. And the smallest measurable bit is a Planck wavelength. Um, I'm fuzzy on that right now. Michael Jobin wants to know what continent Canada is on anyway. North America. Um, what are some Doctor Who measurements? Tom Nathy notes. What are the Doctor Who measurements? Do they have Colin? special measurements? I don't know. I think they just use British. Scarves. Um, they measure time. The click. Huh. Anyway, I'm sure the internet will figure that out. Um, of course, there's uh, man. What was it in um, Battlestar Galactica? Oh, uh, it was like. Everything was uh, sectons. Sectons, yeah. Um, I used to know all of those. Did you? Yarons for years. Yeah, I was a weird child. You were not. You were a... Here we go. Categories of measure. Centaur, centon, ergon. Heck, they had a lot. Parsec, quatron, radion, volton... Yeah, wow. Tons. They really just, but I'm sure they're all just the same thing as a uh, metric system. Uh, anyone, any other uh, measurement systems? What about Star Wars? Parsecs, of course, is a measure of time. Yeah, yeah. That was wrong. Um, okay, here's a good question. Bob Harkins notes, why do we use degrees when temperature is measured? Why do we not use degrees on the Kelvin? So, and I mean, the, every time I did that in the past, the pedants would come out and give me a hard time when I'd be like, oh, the temperature is 143 Kelvin degree, degrees Kelvin, which is the no-no. Like, you might as well say that you hate kittens when you do that. So, yeah. So why because, is that? Because. Because okay. reasons. Because reasons. <laughs> That's it. That's all we got. Um, okay. So literally, there's no reason why we don't say degrees Kelvin that we just say Kelvin? Um, I'm sure there is a reason, and I don't know it right now. I think reasons I, is good enough. You, you, hit, you hit a gap in my knowledge of units. It's fine. If someone knows, they can say um, I'm going to Google because Google. Uh, the only standard unit in engineering is furlongs per fortnight, says Bill Lehman. Uh, Nancy Graziano notes, don't feel bad about the calendar. The year is going by way too fast. You are so right. I cannot believe we're already in March. Although, yeah. I certainly look forward to summer. Um... Here's a non-question from Ranko Prozo. Uh, good friend of, uh... Good friend of the show, good friend of Astronomy Cast, Franco. Appreciate all your support. Um, are there any nuclear processes going off in the center of the Earth? Uh, not because it's hot and dense, but um, there's stuff undergoing radioactive decay all throughout the planet. I mean, that contributes um, a huge amount to the temperature, the interior temperature yeah, of the planet. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, pick a radioactive naturally occurring element. It's going to be scattered about the interior of the planet, and some of it is undergoing radioactive decay. Um, there isn't fusion or fission processes naturally ongoing. There was actually um, evidence found in South Africa for a naturally occurring 
um, meltdown of, of, I believe it was uranium, um, but in, in general that sort of occurrence isn't normal. But I found something on Wikipedia, the, the source of all random quickly looked up knowledge, um, that says in the 1967-68 Resolution 3 of the 13th CGPM renamed the unit increment of thermodynamic temperature Kelvin, symbol K, replacing degree Kelvin, symbol, degree symbol K. Furthermore, feeling it useful to more explicitly define the magnitude of the unit increment, the 13th CGPM also held in Resolution 4 that the Kelvin, unit of thermodynamic temperature, is equal to the fraction of 1 over 273.16 of the thermodynamic temperature of the triple point of water. Release the pedants. Yes. Um, Nikolai Ivanov says, would there be any benefit to decimalize time and make the day 10 hours, an hour, 10 minutes, etc.? Yes, and how? <laughs> I mean, it would be so much easier on our math. Come on, that would be the yeah. best thing ever. And good luck getting it done. Yeah. It, it's part of it comes down to the whole degrees system with 360 degrees in a circle. Sure, but I mean, you know, just think of all the times when you're having to make translations of math from hours to seconds or days yes. to seconds, and you've got yes. to divide by 24 and then divide by 60 and divide by, oh, mm -hmm. oh, it would make, you know, just knock three zeros off of it. That would be so much better. Yes, and it'll never happen. So Josh Andrews on Twitter, Twitter writes, I consider my waistline to be a constant unit, but irritatingly there is an increasing number of inches in it. <laughs> right. Is it possible that the universe is, uh, is the thing that's shrinking? No. You just consider that. Because we're chemically held together, so the universe expanding and contracting does not affect our physical size. No, no, but that if his, if his measurement is a constant, you have to really consider that it's actually the universe that's changing, not him. So One of my favorite quotes from graduate school, which I'm, I'm going to slightly misquote, I suspect, was one of our professors at one point said, um, the constants of the universe may be found to change over time, but the equations stay the same. And the issue was we're constantly redefining the constants, modifying the values for the constants as we measure them more accurately. But the equations the constants get plugged into are a constant. Right. Um... Simon Love asks, with the recent measurement of the Large Magellanic Clouds rotation, do you think that we're going to eventually shift to a new calendar or timekeeping system which is less human-centric and based more on modern science? No. No. I mean, no. Uh, I mean, what would be, if you could go back and just scrap it, how would you measure the universe, the age of the universe? Would you measure it in seconds since the Big Bang? That becomes a bit unwieldy. Well, yeah, you know, as you know, these <laughs> kinds of issues don't concern me, um, as I speculate wildly. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm... The latest set of videos that we just did is just me going off the deep end on speculation. So, yeah, yeah, I just I couldn't help. We, we, we had an episode on how we would destroy black holes. I even used that matter-antimatter collision question that we got. And I'm sure you will earn lots and lots of views. Yep. Um, uh, Farscape. Use the Arns for hours. Okay. Man, I love Farscape. What a great show. I don't think I ever watched that one. That was, that was out the last two years I was in graduate school, and there was very little I consumed other than Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Allow me to collectively gasp in shock and horror that you haven't watched for, for the entire audience listening right now that you haven't watched Farscape. I, from, it's, I I've it's watched Firefly. Again. Does that, that no, redeem me? No, no way. Farscape is space adventure with puppets. So it's like the Muppets meets Star Trek. So if, go watch it. It's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Got anything else? Um, do you have any more questions? No, but I'm just going to point out that I can like see what's on your screen reflected in the back of your microphone, and it's kind of funny. Wow. <laughs> it's too high. Yeah. 
Um, you can see it yourself. Recursive phrasers for a moment. It all the way down. Um, okay. Uh, well, if anyone else got a question, let's see. Uh, Rich Hayward says, I still use the Yaron. Uh, Lexi V says, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good. How are you, Pamela? I'm sniffly. Oh, she's sniffly. Okay. Uh, Tom Nathy notes that Star Trek was great for confusing metric and imperial units. Yes. Um, oh, Star Trek Enterprise. I, I can't watch it without ranting about the lack of using units consistently. They'll have two ships dropping out of warp separated by like 300 meters. If you're dropping out of warp separated by that little, you're going to hit each other. And then they'd have like 80 meter separation, and then they'd have a couple million meters. It, it's, they're random in their units. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Tom was getting at. Um, anything else? Oh, there's a ton. Kill a Ritter scale, Kelecam, Ketrick. Tons are evil because there, there's multiple amounts of mass or weight that are called tons. So you have short tons, long tons. It, it don't use tons. It's latinum, bad. gold pressed lat, gold pressed latinum. Don't recall that. Okay. It's the Ferengi. Form. I I know, but but it it's one of these things where gold pressed latinum. I never quite figured out how to parse those three words together. Because it sounds like they took latinum and pressed it using gold, which is very soft. Hmm. I don't know. It's pretty words, but don't think um, too hard about it. Ronald Minch says, anyone know of Space Engine? It's a realistic space simulator. I think I, I just bought it as part of a bundle. So is it Universe Simulator? Maybe it's a different thing, Space Engine. Uh, please, uh, Ronald, can you send me more details? Because as people may know, I love every single one of these space simulators. My favorite is the Kerbal Space Program, but I just absolutely love this kind of stuff. So if you can email it to me, just info at Universe Today, I'd love to check it out. Thanks. And don't send it to me because I'll feel guilty knowing that I don't have the free time because if I start playing, I will never stop playing. I, I need things to do with the kids. So, um, All right, I think we've got all our questions here. Wow. Anyone's got another question for us? Um, okay, so Mr. Saturn 1964 is sort of following what you said, which was that it used to be the convention to talk about degrees Kelvin or degrees absolute when referring to temperatures in the Kelvins, and then in 1967 it was decided that referring to temperature interview intervals in degrees. So I think that's sort of that's where you were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lexi V wants to know your favorite movie. What's your favorite movie? Uh, Don't have one. Favorite sci-fi movie? You know, stuff like that. It it all depends on mood. Mm -hmm. uh, I am totally a member of the Josh Whedon universe. Um, yeah, that's about as far as I will go. Default is something by Josh Whedon. Yeah. Apparently I look like Josh Whedon. That is what people tell me. I think it's the hair. We have the yeah. same hairstyle. And beard. Um, okay, that's it. I think we're going to wrap this up. Well, hey, Pamela, thank you so much yes. as always for bringing your deep knowledge and... Uh, your clearing sinuses, and um, thank you to everyone, all the fans, everyone watching the show today. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we are going to throw an Try again impromptu, tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to throw an impromptu episode of Astronomy Cast at you tomorrow. We will throw it in the schedule as soon as we figure that out and uh, prepare yourself emotionally and mentally and spiritually for, uh, for that episode, which is about to come at you. So. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Pamela. And we will see you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye. It's Dr. Pamela Gay, a professor at Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville, and the director of CosmoQuest. Hey, Pamela, how are you doing? 
I'm doing well. How are you doing, Fraser? Good. Uh, now you have been you've been traveling. Uh, you've got more traveling coming in the future. Um, unclear at this point. I was at Pentacon last week. I contracted the creepy crawly flu. I'm going to go to the doctor before I decide about getting on an airplane again. Right. Because I, I value my eardrums. Right. Uh, now, let's give a quick shout-out to the upcoming CosmoQuest Hangout-a-thon. Yes. On April 26, 27, we are going to do 36 straight hours of astronomy goodness. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different things planned. We're still working on getting the confirmations in from everybody, so bear with us before we start announcing the schedule. But we wanted to let you know this is coming, and you can watch us all slowly lose our minds in the name of science on April 26, 27. It is always hilarious. Um, good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I know you're going to sequester me for a couple of hours. I'll be uh, happy to help out. So Likely more than a couple of hours. Yikes. Um, all right. Go for a few hours. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Well, let's get rolling with, this, with the show. Okay. So uh, how heavy is a kilogram? How long is a second? How warm is a degree? We measure our universe in so many different ways using different units of measurement. But how do scientists come up with the measurement tools which are purely objective? Uh, all right, Pamela. So now I, I'm a Canadian, and so I think in metric. I fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, am also able to think in imperial most of the time. But there's one thing that I just can't think in, in imperial, which is temperature. Really? So, yeah, I, it is, I am incapable, and I really, I try, and so someone goes, oh, it's like 70 degrees out, and I just like, what, what is this gibberish? I don't know what Low that 20s. means. Low 20s. I don't know what that means. I'm not even going to listen to you now, because I, I don't want to find out. Um, so, you know, if, so if you say that it's minus 40, well, then I got some common ground. But, uh, but most of the case, I, I really, I actually have no idea. I don't know if it's warm, if it's cold. If a person says 100 degrees, I don't know, is that boiling water? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So, so I have to admit, temperature is one of those things that my brain gets broken with because I deal so much with people like you who think in self Celsius and so much with, well, my weather comes in imperial, sadly. And um, for whatever reason, my brain automatically switches to Celsius when it hits 32 degrees Fahrenheit and zero Celsius. So suddenly it's like if it's below freezing, it needs to be a negative number as far as my brain is concerned. And so I have this weird, I have to be careful what comes out of my mouth because the units may be randomized. And units of measurement are a bugbear. I mean, if you've been, you know, going through high school, going through university, dragging units of measure along is awful. And that's how you lose your marks because you forgot to remember that it's meters per second squared or... Let me just grab this, or else Preston's just going to uh, kill me. Um, what else is happening? So, what's in the news? Crazy thing about Ukraine. Yeah, it's um, getting invaded by Russia, or at least Crimea is. Yeah. Um, did you uh, Did you see that uh, Gravity won a bunch of Oscars last night? Yes. Yes, it did. Deservedly so? And, and Jennifer Lawrence once again fell down wearing high heels in a fancy dress. Oh, did you? Oops. That was the lead story this morning instead of Russia invading Crimea on the first news site I went to. Really? Yes. J-Law falling. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready to record? Mm-hmm. Okay. As am I. So it begins. Okay. okay. I'm going to press record. I have pressed record. It is recording. It is in mono. Testing, testing. Okay. Um, bring this over here. Hello, Preston. As always, we thank you for your dedicated service to Astronomy Cast. We couldn't Even do if this it does sound buddy. like he's mocking you, we know. <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm so not mocking you, Preston. We love you so much. Uh, okay, here we go. Astronomy Cast, episode 336 Units of Measure. Welcome to Astronomy Cast, our weekly facts-based journey through the cosmos. We help you understand not only what we know, but how we know what we know. My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and with me, I'm, I know I'm always look so serious when I'm trying to figure this out, because 
every time I hover over the stop broadcast button, I'm like literally just about to end this broadcast. I don't know why. It's like it's red, it's shiny. I can't, I can't resist. I, I've done it before. It's, Have you I done it? it? Yeah. Yes. It's yes. weird. It's like of all the buttons to press, do not press the one that stops your show, and yet that's the one that I really want. I really it, want it's, to press. it's red and inviting. I know. I know. Well, how are you feeling, Pamela? I, I am surviving. This is apparently the year where I, I said I wanted more things I do to go viral, and I wasn't really intending it for it to be body parts with viruses. Oh, all right. So you are, you are the typhoid Pamela. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I continue to combat the viral sludge that <laughs> hates me. Um, so, but you also, we didn't record last week because you were actually on an airplane returning from Pensacon, which was super fun, I hope. It, it really was, and, and we would have recorded that morning except I started to get sick while at Pensacon, so I was patient zero at Pensacon, mm. and... It's yeah, a gift that so. keeps on giving. It it is it is. I give science and germs. Visit me often. <laughs> um, and then, uh, but we're gonna try and record probably tomorrow. We'll make up the missing episode, and then we should be back on back yes. on track until other things happen. I've I've got some travel coming up, although it probably won't impact us for the next couple of weeks. Um, so, uh, for anyone who has never done this before, uh, and specifically, I'm talking to you, C.S. Breyer, who says that you've never done this before, um, we're going to be recording a live episode of Astronomy Cast uh, right here on Google+. So, we'll take about 30 minutes, and we will record the show that the regular, uh, non-enhanced audio listeners who have been getting the show will get. And then we'll stick around for a few minutes. I'm not sure how Pamela's energy level is doing. Um, oh, no! What? What? Ah, you did it again! I did it again, but I caught myself. There. We're updated with my year in space calendar. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll stick around for a few minutes after, and we'll answer your questions about space and astronomy, or about the month of March on the year in space calendar. I have nothing to offer about the month of March. No? no. Um, it, it includes an equinox. That, that's the best I can do. Uh, on 17, 1781, on March 13th, William Herschel discovered Uranus. There you go. I'm pleased. Um, actually, for me, uh, March 23rd will be the 15-year anniversary of Universe Today. Dang. Isn't that you're, crazy? You're an old man on the I internet. I know. I know, totally. And you have fabulous lighting for a change. <laughs> I've... I've yeah, well, I've I've got I've got a bunch of lighting going on here. Um, okay, so yeah, so we'll do the show and uh, we'll get rolling. Are you? Uh, oh, you know what I should have done? Something no. important. I should have had my intro done, but I will fake it. Oh, uh, welcome to the making of the sausage, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 